James here of Jara Shut. I've got a video request this time and it's from Abigail's stock and it's very fitting because it's very dark and dreary outside. Firstly though, I'd like to say Happy Easter. I hope you had a really good one. I did. She wanted to see my top five Dario Argento movies. So Dario Argento should be a pretty familiar name to you if you're into the horror genre. He's probably one of our most talented directors, one of our most applauded. He's one of the biggest luminaries in the genre. He's Italian, been working for about the last 40 years. He started off in cinematography, moved on to directorial work. He's worked under Mario Bava, the Italian maestro, one of my favourite directors. And uh, yeah, he's generally one of our most well-known directors in the horror genre and in cinema in general. He does have other work out there, but I'm only going to focus on horror because that's what we're interested in. So uh, what I'll do with this is just show you all the Dario Gento movies I own firstly. Hopefully they're in the order they were made. Um, then I'll go on to my top five. So uh, first up we've got The Bird with the Crystal Plumage. And uh, this is from 1970, his first Giallo movie. It's his first in his unofficial animal trilogy because it's got the bird in there. From uh, 1971, we have Cat of Nine Tails. This is the second in his animal trilogy. Um, these movies have no real link other than the animal included in the title. This one's pretty much a straight giallo film. So next, we have the concluding chapter in the animal trilogy, which is Four Flies on Grey Velvet, again from 1971. Um, this is a crappy uh, DVD-R version, which was the only way you could get this movie uh, up until the new re-release. Deep Red or Profondo Rosso from 1975, probably one of his most famous movies, a giallo movie again. Uh, then talking about famous movies, we've got Suspiria, probably his most famous movie out there. And it's kind of interesting because this movie is not a giallo film and that's what he's really known for. So this one's more supernatural, that kind of thing. It's follow up Inferno from 1980 and uh, a lot of people consider this a bit of a disappointment. Uh, it's a direct sequel kind of thing to Suspiria. Back to Giallo's now, we have Tenebrae, and uh, this one is a very well regarded movie. I thought people might be interested in seeing the Australian version. It's from Umbrella, I like the cover art a lot better on this one. Phenomena, and uh, again, as I said, it's kind of more supernatural themed. Then we have the Australian version from Umbrella again, and I really like the cover art a lot better on this one. We go to 1987 with Opera, again a Giallo movie. And then lastly that I own, we have Trauma from 1993 with Argy Argento. It's also got Brad Dourif in there. And again, it's pretty much a giallo type film, murder mystery. The movies I don't own would be Two Evil Eyes, his joint adaption with George Romero, and uh, their Poe adaptions. Very good movie, I need to get that one. That's from 1990. Then from uh, 1996 would be The Stendhal Syndrome, which I don't own, I have never seen, so I really need to get onto that. Uh, then from 1998 would be his adaption of uh, Phantom of the Opera, and I did not like that movie at all. I didn't think it was a Dario Argento film. Then would be from 2001 Sleepless. Uh, again a Giallo film, but I thought it was a bit tired and uh, a bit recycled from his old work. Didn't really uh, gel for me. 2004 Card Player. Again, more a Giallo type film, uh, but the concept was very uh, interesting, but at the same time very convoluted and silly, so I couldn't really get into it. Mother of Tears, the concluding chapter in his third Mother trilogy along with Suspiria and Inferno and uh, I'm on the side of kind of being disappointed with the movie. Um, he's also got some TV work out there, Do You Like Hitchcock and also The Masters of Horrors. So I didn't include them because they're TV work. But uh, anyway, I'll get straight into this and here we go, top five Dario Gentos. These are in no particular order. Right, so first up would be The Bird with the Crystal Plumage. Now, as I said, this was his first feature-length film, his first Giallo movie, and that's why I think it's so important, because it pretty much established him in the genre. This is often used as a template for his latter work, in the sense that maybe his films didn't improve upon this, but they certainly built upon what he'd learnt to do in this first film. It also showed that Dario Argento was just a very talented director behind the camera. He's technically proficient. His movies look stunning, great cinematography, great camera work and angles, very inventive and creative. So that visual aspect is one of the most important uh, reasons I chose this film. These uh, Dario Argento movies, the story is often secondary or used as a vehicle for the visual and audio assault you're going to get throughout the movie. And he does, he does it very unabashed, he doesn't apologise for that. The movie is very stripped back. This one has a man uh, witnessing an attack in an art gallery and he's perilous to do anything but he starts to investigate himself and that's a pretty common story thread in a Dario Argento movie and in a Giallo movie in general. So as I said, it's not really important, the story. This movie's in there because 
It showed that Dario Argento was a very great director, visually stunning, great stalk and slash, all the giallo elements and pulled off brilliantly, great film in general and uh, at the same time an important movie in his career because it was his first giallo movie, so uh, Bird with the Crystal Plumage. Next would be Deep Red or Profondo Rosso from 1975. Now uh, Deep Red is very stylish, very smartly done, great pacing, uh, the atmosphere is really really good. The giallo elements like the stalk and slash, all that kind of thing is really well done again. It's just top notch really. The violence and all that kind of thing, while shocking and brutal, it's also very beautiful at the same time. Dario Argento has a, a way of doing that kind of thing. It also again shows Dario Argento's uh, technical and directorial prowess. Uh, you can really see he's a talented director. You have to mention the score in this done by Goblin. It's my favourite uh, Goblin score. Atmospheric stuff that really bolsters the movie up, makes it a more rewarding experience. Also really like in this movie, the flashes of surrealism. Uh, it's got a strange Freudian-like undercurrent to the movie, which uh, really just pushes it up in quality. It makes it a lot more interesting. And so uh, check it out if you haven't seen Deep Red. So next up we have, surprise surprise, Suspiria. And how could I not include Suspiria? It's his most famous work. It's my favourite Dario Argento movie in general. And as I said, it's, it's kind of a revelation because Dario Argento is most readily associated with Giallo. And this movie is certainly not a thriller film or a Giallo movie. It's very supernatural themed and has a fairy tale, nightmarish quality to it. Um, one of the most important aspects of the film is the atmosphere. And it gets that spot on because it, has, it does feel like you're experiencing a nightmare or a dream. It has that quality about it, very ethereal and strange bold flashes of colour in the film and at the same time it's a very dark movie. Very strange and unsettling and off-putting in a way and it's hard to put your finger on why it's like that. Just the visual aspect of it is beautiful, stylish and colourful and really well framed and shot. The score of course done by Goblin, probably one of the most memorable in Dario Argento's filmography. Suspiria, it's one of his best movies and in my opinion his best film out there so get this one if you haven't got it, Suspiria. Right, now we have Tenebrae, pretty much just a straight giallo movie, it's very traditional in that sense. He's on top of his game in this one, very well realised and executed in my opinion. It has great pacing, very entertaining throughout the whole film, never boring or anything like that. But the story in this one also seems to be a little more important too. It has this novelist whose latest book is being used as kind of a blueprint for all these murders that are taking place and the fingers kind of pointed at him so yeah, the story is a bit more fleshed out, a bit more, so it should be applauded for that too. Again, just the visual aspect, very stylish. The killings in this one, the stalk and slash, all that kind of thing, it's probably among Dario Argento's most memorable stuff, and very shocking and violent, but also at the same time done with that Dario Argento ingenuity and creativeness. And so this movie is just a really impressive work, uh, a really well done giallo film. So if you want to see a great example of a giallo film, watch Tenebrae. Next up we have, maybe this is not a popular choice, but I really like the film. I think it's very impressive, very well done, very stylish, and uh, it's opera. Now, I see this one as a kind of best of compilation of Dario Argento. He's uh, taken all uh, that he's learned from his other films and it's kind of all packed into this one. It's visually beautiful. Uh, it's got some great psychological stuff in there. The atmosphere is great, great music again. A young actress in an opera, she's being stalked by this uh, deranged person and she often gets assaulted and tied up and she's made to watch people being killed. Um, and as you can see on the front here, she has pins taped underneath her eye, a gag put on her mouth and she, she's perilous to do anything, she can't move. It's just visually arresting sometimes. Um, very shocking and violent, but at the same time very beautiful. Dario Argento seems to know how to do that kind of thing. The stalk and slash is just top notch. One of my favorite incarnations of this kind of thing in a Dario Argento movie. Yeah, just a, a really uh, well thought out, well executed, really well conceived idea for a film. And again, the visual imagery is just beautiful. Some really nice, grand, uh, full shots in the movie. Very austere and larger than life and very beautiful. Uh, the opera houses and the streets and we also get to see it kind of changes pace right at the end and you're taken to this totally different location and I really like that. Now, uh, a lot of people kind of find the music a bit jarring. I didn't really mind it at all. Um, so, 
Opera may not be a popular choice, but I really, really like this film. And I think it's really impressive. So check out Opera if you haven't seen it. So that's going to have to be it. Um, if you'd like to make a video response, uh, I'd really appreciate that. But uh, yeah, if you agree with my choice or don't agree, I'd really like to hear your thoughts. So just leave a comment and uh, rate, of course. So yeah, uh, thank you for watching and Jarosad out.